Hey everybody, it's Girl Archaeologist, and I have decided that I am sick of not having pretty backgrounds like everybody else on YouTube, so today I am going to be trying to make my very first green screen. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so I went out and I bought some supplies. So first I went to Lowe's to buy my PVC. This is 600 PSI half inch PVC pipe. They sell it in 10 foot lengths, but the great thing uh, is they'll actually cut it to length for you at Lowe's. So I was able to uh, get three three foot lengths out of each 10 foot piece. So I had to buy four pieces So this. All of this PVC cost me about five bucks. Now the joints are also from Lowe's. These cost about 70, 75 cents a piece. So you have four of the L's, four of the little T-shaped pieces, and here's the cross piece for the middle. In case you want to make it permanent, um, I'm going to attach some of my ends permanently, maybe at a later point. So PVC cement doesn't cost much. Um, this stuff is super toxic. It will stain everything and the fumes are just incredible. So if you are going to use this outdoors, then I went to Walmart, my arch enemy, but sadly one of the only places where you can buy this sort of thing in this area. And I got some pins because I needed more pins for sewing. Uh, some Kelly green thread and a bolt of green fabric. Now the fabric that they had was 36 inches wide, which is three feet. So I needed, um, need two six foot lengths, a uh, little over six feet. So technically you could do it with about five yards. Um, to be safe, I just bought the whole bolt, which is 10 yards. So this cost me about 19, 20 bucks. And then I have a sewing machine and I suspect that you would want to do this with a sewing machine you could probably sew it by hand but it would take a really long time so if you don't have one borrow one from somebody Okay, so I'm trying to do this as easily as possible with as little measuring and cutting and all that. But I do have to measure out the length of the pieces. So we had 76 inches and I'm gonna add four inches to each end to make the loops that are gonna go around the pipes. So that makes 84 inches, which is conveniently exactly seven feet. Now, we repeat. Okay, so because we're going to be sewing these two pieces together into one large piece, you're going to want to pin the two pieces together before you sew them. Um, this fabric being a cotton poly blend, it looks exactly the same on both sides, so that makes that simple. So we are going to start with a pin at the one end. Now the two pieces of fabric aren't going to line up perfectly at the ends because we weren't super specific when we were measuring them. Um, pinning for sewing a really straight seam like this, if you've got any experience sewing with a sewing machine, really isn't 100% necessary. Uh, but it makes me feel better. I always figure better safe than sorry. So I'm going to place these pins about every four to six inches. Uh, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Now you don't want to be pulling the fabric tight, uh, but you do want to just sort of smooth it out and make sure that it's there's no gapping or bunching. It's probably easier to do this on a flat surface. I'm just doing it on my lap so I can film it. I have gone ahead and I have threaded my little craft sewing machine with my Kelly Green thread, as you can see here, and want the fabric to the outside of the machine so it doesn't get all bunched up in the middle. I've got the presser foot down, and now... Now I want to make the tube that the piping is going to fit through. So I have one of the little one foot ends left over from when my pipe was cut to use to measure. And I can roll this on over. And you know, you want to have it all hanging out. So that looks pretty good. And we'll pull this down. Just for fun, if you measure it, basically two inches, which is great. So 
You're just going to pin that right there. And now, I'm just going to keep on going down. Make sure that it's still folded at two inches or a little bit more. And I'm just going to keep on going down, keep pinning the whole piece like this. Okay, so I know this isn't the best angle, but this is the only way this fits in my room right now. Um, you want to lay out the top beam of your, uh, your frame because one important thing is going to be that you don't sew closed where the pipe has to be able to come out for the corners and for the middle. So we're going to mark those spots. And I'm going to do it with a double pin. Um, if you have a fabric pencil, that's perfect, but I do not. So I'm going to do it inside where the pipe bends. So there's a double pin right there. Then we're going to do it here on either side and leave a little extra space. You don't want it to be just impossible to get through. And for the middle piece, you actually want to leave enough for the whole joint because you're going to have to be able to get the joint in there when you're putting it together. So I'm actually going to pin it outside of the joint. So you're going to leave a hole that's about three inches across. I'm going to find the first set of double pins and I'm going to start sewing right after them. And I basically want my um, the edge of the presser foot to be eh, right at the edge of the fabric. Basically we want to leave a half inch seam there. And now we sew. So now I'm going to put my fabric on the frame and see if it's hanging properly. So here you can see, it's my finished green screen. As you can see, I've just wrapped the spare fabric around the side poles and I'm using these straight pins to hold them in place. Now at some point I want to come up with a better fastening system, but at the moment this works pretty well because it lets me make adjustments very easily. One change that I made, which I really like, is I swapped out the bottom corner pieces for these three ways. Now, the third direction actually screws in, so I got a screw cap, and this is one of those one foot lengths left over from when I had my PVC cut, and I put a cap on it just to make it safe. So I've got one of these facing forward on one end, and one of them facing backwards on the other end. The application of a little weight, like for instance my 500 gig Mac store hard drive, and suddenly you have a freestanding green screen. For lighting, I have two 250 watt work lights. Those cost about $13 a piece. And two 150 watt tin hats. They cost about $8 a piece, providing the backlight for the green screen. And then to light myself, I have two more 150 watt tin hats. Well, well, let's see if it worked. Where have I always wanted to go? I know, Egypt. Yes!